How's it going, everybody, and welcome to Shin Megami Tensei Network, Link 313. I am your host with the most audio issues under the western sun, Spencer Presley. Joining me is a man fresh off of a crisp, cold limonade, uh, the man himself, Kim Wexler, otherwise known as Oziak. How's it going? Uh, actually, my name is Giselle. Sorry. No, your lord. Damn. Um, <laughs> Fake fan. I'm doing good, though. Fake fan. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I've been I've been relatively good. Oh, I bet you have. I, I, I couldn't couldn't help but notice you didn't help me move last month. So clearly, the invite got lost on the way to Florida. I understand how it is. No, no, no. I saw it. <laughs> I, it's still on the <laughs> fridge. It's just uh, <laughs> being very publicly ignored. Mm, I, I've just I've just got a white flame, just slowly finding its way to the note. <laughs> It's like it's like the world's saddest level of burn the rope. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we're here. We're talking about Shin Megami Tensei and Persona with uh, spoilers. Not much Shin Megami Tensei going on this week, but uh, we actually do have a pretty decent amount of Persona related news. But before we get into that, I'm going to try something different, and I'm going to let everybody know. Uh, that this is a weekly show, and if I keep saying that, it'll eventually happen. Because uh, I keep saying weekly, and then like it becomes too- bi-weekly. But it's not for lack of trying, I promise you all that. But I appreciate everybody's awesome patience with that. But uh, yeah, this is uh, the Internet's number one longest-going uh, SMT Atlas and Persona-related podcast. If you enjoy the show and want to help keep it uh, afloat, we have a Patreon. It's called patreon.com slash SMTN. I'll talk about that more at the end of the show, but I want I want to like try this thing called like self-promotion and like see if it actually like helps because I'm uh, hysterically bad at it. But uh, but speaking of things we're both hilariously bad at, Ozzy, what have you been up to? Because, like, you've been so busy, but, like, ironically not with your own things. So it's like we don't really have, like, a bunch of stuff to show people. But I know you've been doing things. Yeah, no, so so my recent gambit has been making videos for other people. So, because that, that's the thing. For once, I can genuinely say I've been consistently making videos. It's just... The upload schedule on my channel looks identical. <laughs> but yeah, no, so I, I've been doing a bunch of different stuff. Um, I, I've done some, like, Zelda videos. Some Did, like, a Ben 10 tier list, like, of, of all the aliens. Uh, I'm trying to think. There's, like, a Sonic like a Sonic movie versus Mario movie video. Um, so, yeah, just just steadily just getting some work in, get, getting some money in. Just having a good time and generally just improving with my editing skills which is nice so uh we're, we're we're living in an interesting time for a media right now so i figured everyone's probably dying to know where do you stand on the hot um issue right now the hot button topic uh are you team barbie or team oppenheimer you know you know everyone loves a good oppenheimer i i know that like people you know oh he's canceled he's canceled whatever but like I, I understand the people who have his back. With that said, though, like, <laughs> come on. Come on. I don't know. I, 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 I'm going to – is this a controversial take? I bet – I'm at least willing to bet publicly. I feel like more people have been – like, at least on the internet. I think the internet has tried to cancel Barbie more than Oppenheimer. Yeah, well, okay. You say the internet. It's more so – the internet grifters but that's true yeah though apparently a lot of them now are trying to say that it's it's secretly against everything that it's actually for and i think that's hilarious so you know i guess let them dream let them believe so the correct answer though in case you were wondering, uh, was actually neither. It was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: Mutant Mayhem. So I'm, gl- I, I'm, gl- I'm glad you, uh, I'm glad you found that out. Um, yeah, no, I, I really need to. <laughs> Have you seen the, um, the, the concept art they posted of all of the like the, the baby versions of them, where they yeah. got Donatello's head is just like a rectangle. <laughs> Yes, and man, let me tell you, um, the movie's not very far off for that concept art. Them is baby. I mean, honestly, like it. Uh, ironically, that movie might be one of the most purposefully ugly movies I've ever seen in no, my it, life. It's I, really funny. I, 
I think that movie looks awesome because I think they they said that very intentionally. It is designed to look like uh, basically kids designed all the characters. Hundred percent, hundred hundred. Really trying to lean into that, drawing all the background stuff out, like which takes a lot more effort to like intentionally make everything all like jagged and warped and like like especially as a professional and with big old three D models and sets like that is a lot. No, it, exactly. And and by the way, something I weirdly didn't know about the movie before going in. Do you know who does the soundtrack? No. Fucking Trent Reznor and Atticus Clay <laughs> from Nine Inch Fucking Nails. <laughs> huh. Like literally one of the weirdest, weirdest things ever. But uh, <laughs> cannot cannot recommend enough. Unfortunately. Sadly, uh, not Atlas related, but I had to. I I feel like Turtles will probably still be too close to the Barbie the Barbieheimer, like Storm, to get its like true justice. But I bet it'll like eventually make its money back. Cause it had like actually a pretty small production budget budget, okay. but uh, I I at least wanted to put it out there because I feel like not enough people have like talked about. Uh, it, it was a weird like. Wednesday release too, like and I and I'm not sure if it's like maybe film Twitter's been all over it and I just haven't really noticed it, but I just I I at least wanted to put that out there because obviously everyone and their mom's gonna go see Barbie if not now eventually, but uh yeah because yeah, if if I talked about Barbie here it would just be me talking about Ryan Gosling for two and a half hours exactly exactly like I said we've all got that energy right now. <laughs> I want you to know, if I wasn't hilariously poor, I would be. I would buy the official Mattel "I am I am Knuff" hoodie if it was the last yeah. thing I I could do. No, um, so so I made the mistake of not explicitly looking up like when that movie was releasing. So so last time I was visiting my girlfriend in uh in July, I thought that the movie because I was visiting like mid July, so I thought that the movie would have dropped by then. So I was suggesting, like, hey, if we go up there, we could go on, like, a double date with some some of your friends, and we could go see the Barbie movie. Um, and so she had gotten me a late birthday present by the time I got there, and one of the gifts was just, like, a really nice pink polo shirt where it was like, yeah, we're not actually going to be able to see the movie because it comes out, you know, by the time you leave. But, like, <laughs> I, I had bought this for if we wanted to watch it, we were all just going to get dressed up, like, all nice and pink. Be... That yeah, is so it's, that that it's is the funny. mandatory uh, way way to Barbie is as everyone knows. Like I think like if you go in there just like wearing like a normal like graphic tee like black t shirt or whatever, it's like did you did you not get the message like what's going on? Yeah, you you either need to go all pink, you need to go suit and tie, or preferably all pink suit and tie. I like the uh, I like the counterculture list of like you can go in there. Like wearing all pink as is tradition, unless you want to just fully commit and cosplay from uh, Oppenheimer, which is also allowed. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> just wear like the most unwelcoming hat, like of all time, just just cause. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, everybody, we're here. We've actually got some Atlas news. We're not going to bore your ears off talking about movies for the nine millionth time. Uh, also, mostly because neither of us have watched Secret Invasion, so we can't complain about that either. So sad face. Mm-hmm. But uh, you've been playing anything though, because you actually do. Uh, you, you've got some mildly related. Uh, what you've been playing in the in the year twenty twenty three, the hottest three DS game out there. Yes, sir. I, I will say first off, uh, completely unrelated to that, but I did finally, after like two years, be great. Uh, great Ace Attorney Chronicles, and that was phenomenal. Oh, nice. God, like, um, <laughs> it took a hot minute to do it because I kept falling asleep, not because it was bad. But just because reading makes me sleepy, like no, a like a little friggin' toddler. No, nothing says peak <laughs> fiction more like that image of Patrick like slumped over on the couch <laughs> snoring. Yeah, no, exactly. So yeah, so eventually I did get through that, um, and yeah, so just on a whim, uh, I was gonna play Q1 first, and I just said screw it. Um, yes, yeah, I started Q2, and that game's been awesome. PQ2 is like. Because people, the general impression I had gotten from people is that it was good with, like, a lowercase, sometimes uppercase G, and that it was generally better than the first game. Again, I can't comment on the first game as much. 
don't know. I, I think this game's awesome. At least where I'm at. Is the lack of a dub hindering your enjoyment? I literally could not care less. Pe- I, again, I, I got, like, a little annoyed because I saw people constantly being like, oh, yeah, you know, it's a, it's a good game and all, but, like, I can't play it uh, because it doesn't have a dub. Or I, I think I even saw someone, they were like, yeah, it's like a 9 out of 10 game, but it lacks a dub, so I'm giving it a 7. I'm like, I don't... The Japanese dub is fine. Like, it's completely fine. I It's fine. I'd take the English dub if it was there. But it's fine. You know what? I actually just thought of something that, like, was originally, like, I've, I've been trying to decide how I want to talk about this. I, I have a newfound, like, hatred, Ozzy. Okay. And I don't hate things very often or very liberally, unless we're talking about Are you going to commit a hate crime? No. <laughs> thank God, no. Thank God. <laughs> um, I know right now the topic of, like, artificial intelligence and AI voices have been pretty controversial. And my opinion of it is mostly... Most of the time, if you're not trying to make money or you're doing and you're not doing weird stuff with people's voices, there's some silly stuff that could be done. But I'm generally not like bothered by a lot of AI voice videos I see. Obviously, okay. in terms of the medium of like using it to for like malicious purposes and stuff like that, obviously that case is bad. But I but it's led to a new hatred that for like a week and a half straight, all YouTube was giving me for shorts were Persona 5 AI videos of them just reading the worst scripts imaginable. Of, like, Joker... AI... Sorry. AI Joker talking to AI Makoto about his uh, boyfriend, husband, wife, uh, AI Akechi, and just, like, a f- like footage of just, like, some random knockoff clone game on the iOS store plays underneath it, and I'm like... This has unlocked a new level of hatred in me I didn't know was physically possible. Yeah, no, that sounds like we found the 10th circle of hell. Like, have you uh, seen any of these? I don't... Maybe one. Because th- that, to me, just sounds like another thing we've seen recently where it's like, you know, when it's very easy to produce over and over content like that because it's AI. Like, you saw, like, the Trump and Biden stuff where they were using, like, the AI voices for them and, like, the first few times it was funny, and there were some, like, funny ways to iterate on it. But for the most part, it was like, oh, new meme format that I have to put in, like, 2% effort? Alright, I'm gonna spam out an entire channel's worth of this? It's like, don't... Why? Why? It's not necessary, man. Yeah, and, like, ironically, if you gave me, like, a 10-minute video of, like, the three president AI voices in discord all talking about like what their favorite persona is i would find that funnier than just like here's the cast of this game i like and i'm just going to have them read my fan fiction yeah um just because it's kind of like it feels like less purposefully yucky whereas like the president one is more of just them goofing my well, yeah, that, that at least has the juxtaposition of it is, haha, it's the president of the United States <laughs> acting like idiots. Which, granted, nothing new. Uh, but Ozzy, please, yeah. please, whenever you get a chance, there's there's some channel I forgot their name on it. They they did like the presidents do an official One Piece podcast, and it's like the most deranged thing oh, ever. <laughs> of like of like Trump is like a huge dub hater, hates Sanji. They have like a waifu ranking, like all these different like things. Like they have like their own like like verbiage as if they are like a real podcast like stuff like that like there's ways to do that in a way that's like funny without kind of getting old and again obviously like it's a thing that i've seen two or three videos on not something that like just is endlessly repeatable garbage but like this did make me think of something though i wonder what would happen if we took the script for pq2 and actually used AI voices to give it an AI, like, English voice cast. I despise that idea. So, like, I, because and I was thinking about that, it, like... I, I will beat them. I was like... Obviously, we would, in, we would appreciate an actual produced English dub. But it's kind of one of those weird things of, like... 
there's really nothing kind of stopping that from happening outside of the fact that it's like hilariously long it would take a lot of work like putting the whole script in there and like lining everybody up but i was kind of like thinking like is that like some is that an example of like oh that's interesting or like oh that's gross i i think that's really freaking gross and also that is the exact kind of thing that like is what a lot of the voice actors are like stressed about like i i think that is a horrible idea it's but it's like a weird one though like if it came up in my brain i'm like i'm kind of but like it's a bad idea but i'm kind of shocked i hadn't seen it though you know yeah, what i, I mean i understand i understand where the thought comes from i i understand that i just think in execution if someone is like you know what we're gonna do this we're gonna actually make this i'd be like i and I'm, I'm gonna commit a crime. I mean, I'm gonna say this right now. We're five year, five years away minimum from a game having a completely AI voice cast. Lock it uh... in. Lock it in. It's true. Like we already have it with art. We already have it with a lot of like uh, design elements. Um, I I will say though, it is interesting in the sense of like going back to, like, those videos and how much they, like, do resonate with people, I think the thing that honestly grosses me out about it the most, though, is you see the reception is so overwhelmingly positive by people who just eat yeah. this up. So it's, like, the, clearly it's something that, like, the general public doesn't care where it's coming from. Whether it be actual Xander Mobus or AI Joker doing lines, like they don't care. Like they're they're mm. getting their AI AI like song cover fix wherever they want, you know. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Important question. On, on the note of what you said before, within the next five years, who do you think is going to cave first, Activision Blizzard or uh, Bethesda? Definitely one of those is gonna do it. Trick question. They're both Microsoft, so I'll say probably both. Gosh dang it! <laughs> uh, um, but in terms of who will ship something first, you'll see someone. You'll see a Call of Duty skin with someone's voice, and it's just AI because it was cheaper than getting them to actually record the voice. Oh gosh, we're gonna get the worst timeline where it's gonna be like every one of these AI fears come to life, where it's gonna be an AI voice. Of like some dead actor. Oh, like, I I wasn't even thinking of that. I was thinking like it'll be AI John Carlo Esposito as like a Call of Duty announcer pack. Mm-hmm. My gosh. So yeah, like sadly, I could probably see it there first with it, but um, the tricky part has been like I just genuinely don't know how people are gonna reel it in though you know because like obviously like we talked about like we've seen with the voice actors like they really fucking hate it because obviously like hey if if i found out there's a free uh version of me that could just do everything i do without my permission yeah that'd be pretty gross too but then the other interesting thing with it has just kind of been like i think the idea of it is like this like if i was someone like let's say i'd made a video that was like, here's me, I like, let's use the um, Erica example of, I made a song cover using uh, Futaba's voice. And then, uh -huh. I, and then I found out that the voice actress doesn't like that, and she wants it to be taken down. I'd be like, oh, cool, I'm sorry, I was just goofing around and I and I was making a video, let me put it up. I find the idea that people, like, push back on that, like, no, your voice is our, is our creative liberty, you don't have, like, access, like, this, it's like, so it's... <laughs> Well, it's a, it's a weird one of, like, because I've been on both sides of this in terms of thinking of, like, sometimes voice actors can definitely act like they own a character a little too much, you know? Yeah, but, okay, there's a difference between owning a character. Like, I think when you go back to, I forget her name, but the, the Bayonetta actress, where she oh, got, God. like, really, <laughs> yeah, and I know, I know. I know that's a that one's a lot, but she got really no. That's a that's a good example. Like, yeah, she literally yeah, was no, like, "I'm Bayonetta." Yeah, the new actress, like you know, good for her, whatever. But I'm Bayonetta. She's not Bayonetta, whatever. It's like okay, what? Okay, uh, which even when people were on her side, that part people were like, okay, like that's you're you're being a little weird about this. Um, but that's the thing. That's more so like you're saying that no one can reinterpret this character. It's different when someone is repurposing your explicit voice. 
it, it's not the character's voice, quote unquote. It's your voice and your performance that they are channeling back through, which I think is dumb and bad. Are you ready for an evil twist question? Mm-hmm. How much do you think people's opinion would change on AI voices if they had royalties in those videos and the monetization that came from their voices? How much people, like, their things would change? Yeah, like, how much do you think someone's opinion would change? Because, like, a great example, like, look at Troy Baker last year when he signed up for that company who was doing, like, vo like, vo like AI voices and was going yeah. to supply his voice because he was getting paid for it. So, like, clearly... There's a price for everything, but obviously right now, the way that AI is right now, it's just kind of the Wild West of, like, anything goes. Like, do you want, like, a cover of the Japanese, like, voice actor for Luffy singing this, like, Spanish song? There you go. It's there for you. But, like, if you tried to monetize that, and then there was a way of people getting, like, royalties for it of, like, hey... That's my voice. You got to give me this percentage of whatever your ad revenue is, and that's just an agreed upon fact. How much do you think the negative opinion on AI would change from voice actors? I I definitely think there would be some voice actors who would cave to it because money. I don't think it would be weird. Maybe this is a hot take and me being a little, I guess you could argue optimistic. I still think the majority would be like what the heck are you guys doing? Like, it's it's a very... It feed, it, it's basically feeding the beast in a way that I feel like a lot of them would not appreciate. Like, <laughs> this, this is weirdly specific uh, as a way to describe it, but, like, I feel like if the news came out of some voice actor doing that, like, right now, or, like, a big, like, movement for that, you would get Sean Chiplock friggin' writing as many aggressive tweets towards them as possible. Um, yeah, and, and, and I, I say that in a non-derogatory way. Shout out to Sean. <laughs> no, yeah, but uh, it, it, there is like obviously like we've talked about before. Like, there's different echelons of like, yeah. Like, there is a very large gap between a Sean Shiplock and an Erica Hartletcher and like a Troy Baker or a Nolan North. Yeah, which is why because even like I think it was if I'm thinking of the right thing with Troy Baker, he like did that and people got pissed at him. And then I, I guess he was like he didn't. Know, or I think of something else, of him like not knowing the implication. Uh, it was mostly more of a "Hey guys, you yelled at me a lot, so I'm gonna pull out of this thing. Well, please, I, please, I, please I, forgive I, me." I, I'm I'm talking about the official statement, not the what it clearly was. <laughs> the, the the official statement, from what I remember, was basically a lot of "I should have been more clear, and I should have known what I was signing You're up right. for more." But it was never a "Oh, I, like like." Because when he talked about it, I remember that one of the funniest things about his statement on it after he made the public uh, statement on the apology was he literally was like, listen, guys, I'm just trying to, like, do what I can to secure money for my family. Yeah. And I'm like, well, yeah, at least you're honest about it. But it was like, it, when it came down to it, it was like, no, this was just a money move. Yeah, which I'm not saying all voice actors are super paid, like, paid super well. We, def we know they definitely are not. That does make me curious how sincere the intent behind that is, considering it's, it's Troy Baker. Like, like he, he is literally, like, one of three voice actors, if, if even, that people joke about getting cast for literally every big budget game. Yeah, and I mean, and a, a lot of it also probably goes into, like, they have other like they have other kind of ways to it now. Obviously, Troy Baker's not getting cast in as many things as he is, like, used to get, like, cast in ten years ago. But a large yeah. part of that is mostly due to he's probably too expensive for most people now. Mm -hmm. um, but then, like, you replace that then with, like, other things of, like, okay, he's doing less video game voice acting... But he's still doing, like, The Last of Us TV show. He's still going to conventions all the time. He still uh, has a very popular, like, podcast and social media following. Um, mm. di different things like that. So, like, it obviously this is, like, a way bigger, like, bag of worms kind of topic. But it is an interesting yeah. one I, I, I wanted to bring up because I'd be curious what the comments think of, like, there's not a one right answer. Like, again, we go back mm. to this of, like, right now the majority is showing ha-ha, funny AI videos make me laugh. They're not showing any sign of slowing down. Yeah, no, because, like, 
I, I know I'm on a more extreme end than a lot of people. I'm like very staunchly like for like 99% of things that people are pitching, like no way I, I find a lot of it gross and misses the entire point of art. I know that's more of an extreme take on it, but like, yeah, I just, I don't, I don't bother with it. Cause even then like thinking about like what you said about like, yeah, what if we got AI to do a Q2 like dub at that point, again, it would be a lot of effort. It would be like, it would take a while but I think it would be really cool, a really interesting community thing. Why not just, like, organize a fan dub? Like, if it's that big of people want a dub of this game, and again, it wouldn't risk, you know, you're, th in that case, you are reinterpreting the characters and not just reinterpreting someone else's existing voice by using their voice files. Like, just try a fan dub out. Like, that sounds way more interesting than me. And even if it's not perfect, like, it's still a much more compelling fan experience and shows a lot more artistic passion than I am going to plug this person's performance into a computer and spit it out in a very monotone sounding delivery. Oh yeah, for sure. And, and like adding the like human element to that is always so much harder. Um, I'll say at least for the devil's advocate answer, the response to why not just do a fandom is because look at all the amount of fan dubs that do get put out and are produced uh, at various different levels of quality and just get absolutely ignored. Yeah, which again, Whereas, I like, get. Yeah, yeah, because it, it's a, it's a, every part of this is just a giant double edged sword. So like, I totally get all sides, but it, it is that funny one of like the interesting situation with this case is there's still no one right fits all answer, you know. Well, even then, because, like, for instance, there was the there was a recent Royal mod where it just completely replaces uh, Joker with, like, a female version. Um, and it, like, they got a new voice actor for that, like, redubs every single Joker line in that game. It's really cool. I personally think a lot of the delivery in that, for one reason or another, there's a lot of voice lines. I think a lot of the delivery in that isn't great. There are some good stuff in there. And I don't think she's a like inherently bad actress i just think a lot of the delivery wasn't like the best take they could have gotten that being said i will 100 percent take that and absolutely respect that as an act of fan passion over any weird generation thing they could have done or even if they were just like let's just mute the audio instead like i'll take audio that i'm not stellar on if it is that show of passion i know more people are picky about whatever they're doing with the media they consume I personally really appreciate touches like that if it comes from a genuine place. I definitely get that. Man, what a mm. what a meaty opening topic we had. Not even the actual exactly. topic. <laughs> Speaking of AI, uh, <laughs> I'm, are we I'm, getting any Igus news? Oh, I wish. I was just gonna say, are you uh, are are you ready to like work in a very late joke into your next video of AI Ziac? Oh my, what? You know, all I'm saying is I already have the drawing because I have I have the robot version from my Royal Akumura video. I'd say it's give it bit. like give it like two more October acts or whatever month you do like your fan submission drawing. Give it like two more years and like we could just start doing AI like word prompts for your like Twitter avatar picture. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my god. But um yes, our main topic today is mostly kind of a news catch-up. Uh, I do want to like throw in a little uh, a little quick news blurb that I hadn't really seen go around too much, but I was kind of curious what you thought about this. So, okay. in Sega's most recent uh, financial update, we found out that over 600,000 copies of Persona, just in general, yeah. Persona everything, had been sold in the last like three or so months this year. And I was like, kind of like, it's not like, oh, that's surprising, but it does kind of li like lean back into... See, this is like where the tough part is. Like, I really wish they like told us what was what, because it's like, mm -hmm. okay, how much of that was 
Persona 5 versus Persona 3 and 4 that just got put out this year versus maybe some guy got drunk and bought a thousand copies of Ultimax on Steam. I don't know. <laughs> like, what were, like, because it could literally mean anything. It could literally just be people buying games off, like, the eShop before it closed. Because all of those would account. Like, think about all the Atlas games yeah. people bought on the eShop before the 3DS store closed. So like a I mean, but did the, did the 3DS store close within that period? I thought it closed. No, yeah, earlier. it did. Mm-mm, no, because it closed oh, at the uh, beginning okay. of the summer. You're it. No, no, it definitely closed earlier. Than, am I going insane? Is time broken? Now I bought zero 3DS games, so the, I'm not going to be any help. I'm going to look it up right now, though. 3DS like eShop close date. March. March April, maybe. It was March 27th, 2023. Okay. But I think the numbers are also from, like, March to June. Okay. Because it is in, like, the last quarter. I'll double-check that right now. But uh, I can understand that making an impact in that case. I mean, I mean, oh. let, let's be honest. So, like, it, the 3DS sales were probably in the hundreds to maybe low thousand. Yeah. But uh, well, b- being also, optimistic. Yeah, most of, what people, most of what people are buying aren't Persona titles. It is definitely... I'm going to grab every SMT game I can grab if it's going to be that crowd. Um, Because, yeah, all you have on there is, I guess, like Q1 and 2. Oh, and you are correct. It was from April to June. So not not counting any of those stinky, stinky 3DS downloads. Okay, okay. Because what I was going to say is my guess is probably it was due to... I mean, I get... You said it was April to June? April to June, they sold over 600,000 copies. Not, like, any idea of how much money that was, what title it was, if it was newer titles. Anything with the name Persona that was a downloadable game, there were 600,000 copies sold. Because I was going to say, like, you know, Atlas games go on sale basically always. Like, they're always on sale. They're always on sale. Um... Yeah, because I constantly saw uh, both P4G and P3P, like, like any time I'd be scrolling through the uh, PSN store, just, it was always there, taunting me, until eventually, I think this month, I was just like, okay, screw it, I'll just get it on PS5, I don't, sure. Um, because, like, it was like, what, like, 10 bucks for each? Uh, 20, like, actually. Oh, no, this month, yes, it was 10 bucks. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. month it was. So I was like... Sure. So I don't know how much that influenced that. Even then, like, again, 600k, it's simultaneously not surprising, but I'm like, I'm really curious what was pulling the bulk of that. Because, weirdly, I don't assume that would be royal. But then also, yeah, like, it's it's almost four months away from Persona 3 and 4 launching. So it's kind of like, it, it's a weird one of, what has what this happened, like, and like other weird notable ones. By the way, you mentioning like Atlas stuff going on sale a lot. I felt so sad. Did you see like how cheap Soul Hackers Two was this week? Oh yeah, wasn't it like it was also like fifteen bucks for like the deluxe edition, the digital deluxe? That true, but also physical copies. Like Woot was giving away physical copies for nine ninety nine. I was like Jesus. <sighs> You know, if you can buy that game for ten bucks, it's a really fun game. Oh no, opinion. it is, it is, but I'm just like, <sighs> no, I'm, I'm not trying to pitch it to you. Have I'm trying a... to pitch it to the other people. That's true. Yeah, we need a uh, we, we we need more soul hackers out there. Obviously, the third pillar has crumbled. It's crumbled uh, very harshly. It's a very short pillar, but it's a pillar. <laughs> oh man, um, yeah, you know what it was? You know what it was, Spencer? I think hmm. I know where the sales came from. Hmm. People finally woke up in March and realized that P4A you got rollback. That would actually be like the funniest fucking thing ever. Um, <laughs> Five hundred thousand how... sales in a day. How much do you think this affected it? People are looking at E3. They see Persona uh, Three Reload getting announced, and they go, "Huh, let's try Persona Three before the remake." See, that's the thing, is I would almost attribute it to that, but also, like, half of that also... Like, that would definitely give it a bump. But also, I feel like there would be then a lot of people who's like, okay, I'll just wait for this, and I don't have to play that version. 
so like it, it's very split where that definitely would give an, like give it a bump. I just don't know how big of a bump that would be. I know it's also weird too because it's like they're sold copies, so they're not including anything like Game Pass or whatever as well. So it's just mm. like it just leads so many other things up in the air of like what is going on for this. So like a good idea just to like put this in perspective. So Persona in 2020 um basically last year in the last financial quarter Persona sold um in basically the entirety of the year they ended up selling a little over uh like two something million copies or whatnot. Okay. And it, it was one of those interesting things of like quarter one Obviously, last year was a lot slower versus this year, but also quarter one had no release, and so did this one. So quarter mm-hmm. one for them is April to June because they start after March. The financial years end then, so it's kind of like okay, both didn't have a release. Obviously, by the end of last year, they had a release in the form of Persona uh, three, four, and five all getting re-released and other like smaller stuff with it, but. It's it's just that weird thing of like it doesn't feel like there's been a boom in the series, so it's like where was this coming from, you know? Mm-hmm. Clearly, yeah, I- clearly wasn't like anything announced caused this uh, spike outside of E3, and even even then, I I almost feel like I'm in the camp of like wouldn't people see Persona Three getting a remake and then go, oh cool, I'll wait to play that. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. Oh, you know what? Another solution. Atlas has just been counting the sales of uh, the Etrian Odyssey games. Oh yeah, dude. They're the Etrian Odyssey HD collection, fucking selling a uh, more billion units. I've been told they can't stop selling that game. They they bundled in the Persona DLC. It's basically a Persona game. Yeah, um, the, the the Persona see, the Persona that... portraits. <laughs> But see that that game sold maybe the trilogy maybe sold fifty k copies. Uh, multiply that by three, that's a fourth of the of the revenue in the last few months. Now, now to be fair, before people do correct you though, that actually did sell really well in Japan. I think it sold over yeah. three hundred and fifty thousand units just in Japan alone. I mean, I've I've heard they're good ports. Like, I think I think the pricing is wonky, but like I've heard the ports themselves. Everyone who's played it does really enjoy it. Yeah, so, they, I, it, it, it's uh, yeah, eight, eighty bucks is a lot. It's a lot to ask. That's a lot of copies of Soul Hackers. That's eight copies of Soul Hackers too. Yeah. So or at uh, launch one copy with missing DLC. <laughs> you know that you still can't buy those Phantom Thieves costumes. Yes, I, I am perfectly aware, which is why <laughs> I was like, I was staring viciously at the Etrian Odyssey DLC, and I'm like. Because they were like, yeah, it'll be on sale for the general public, uh, like, two weeks later. I'm like, which they, like, stealth announced. They didn't, like, announce that publicly in any meaningful capacity. So I was staring at that. I'm like, if you guys don't bring this back, like, we're, g- we're going to have a problem. There's going to be a problem here. Ozzy's very, uh, very committed to his PNGs. <laughs> so, uh... I need them. Speaking of PNGs, though, we actually got three new Persona 3 uh, JPEGs released at uh, Anime Expo for uh, showing off Akihiko, Mitsuru, and uh, Fuka. You and me are not, I haven't talked about it too much. Where, what's the what's the Aussie hype check for Persona 3 Reload? I think, which I feel like this happens with most Atlas games with me because, like, it's half me being like, you know, this is my genuine critical opinion that people don't like, and also me being like, ha, Atlas show. Um, I I generally like all their stuff, coincidence or not. But yeah, no, I think Reload looks really cool. I, I get some of the criticism with it, um, but like, and I'm really, really excited. How do you feel about the, because uh, I know this got a friggin' storm of reactions. How do you feel about the new voice cast? I... Am frantically trying to get the voice director on, only so uh, I can we, have a pu- who it is? not publicly. So that okay, it, okay. it will not surprise anyone who's followed the other things. But I will say the funny thing about it, though, 
is like my first question I want publicly answered is like was that on purpose? Because it mm. feels like everyone in the audition was give me your best take on this character and not yeah. give me what you think this person sounds like. They were. It really feels like people were cast with the exception of one or two kind of voices of like, hey, give us give us uh, Akihiko, give us Fuka, give us Igis, stuff like that. And yeah, I, I know that bugs some people. I think that is way more preferred for me. Because the, the thing that kind of had me really hyped about it, just from, like, the announcement before we even heard a lot of the voices, was, um, I forget how much we talked about I don't. I forget the last time we actually did one of these. Um, it, it, was, it was before we'd heard anything, for sure. Yeah, because one of my favorite games, I, currently my game of the year, um, is Octopath Traveler 2. And this game just stole, like, 90% of the main voice cast from that game and just threw it into this one. And I am 100% for it because that game's voice acting is some of the best I've ever heard. Uh, it is really, really good. And that cast is really talented. So, like, every single actor I was seeing, I was like, let me see what they've done. Okay, yeah, they're going to nail the part. Okay, yeah, they're going to nail the part. Like, I am really happy with... <laughs> not not from Octopath. One funny thing I did see was... um. Uh, I forget, I forget the name of the voice actress who is voicing Igis. Um, it's something I think Bennett. Um, I'll look. It, I'll, I'll look it. Up. I'll look it up. I think it's like Don Bennett. Um, but yeah, no, she's she's the voice actress of Shez. Um, from from Three Hopes. Oh yes, so just yes, you are you are correct. Yeah. That is Don Bennett. Yeah. So under that response, it was just like a thousand responses of just like a PNG sprite of Shaz with just true written in like comic sans above it. <laughs> it was like, or no, it didn't even say, it didn't even say true. I'm pretty sure it just said Shaz. <laughs> but yeah, no. So like, I, I think this voice cast seems awesome. The only one that like, something that I don't like it. I'm just like, this is probably the most distinct sounding one from before is definitely Akihiko, but I think it still sounds awesome. So See, like, I, I would almost say, I, Aki, I, I give Akihiko probably equal credence with uh, Junpei. Junpei definitely was like, hey, make it sound like Junpei, bonus points if it sounds nothing like Vic Mignogna too. If, yeah. you, if you could do both, that would be great. <laughs> Because no, like, yeah, like he's I very because it. like I, I think Zeno's doing a great job as Junpei in the sense of like he he really sounds like he's owning that character while still sounding like like the Junpei you kind of expect in your head, you know? Exactly. So like and yeah, again, like in terms of just voice actors who I've heard stuff from this year that I thought they killed it. Uh he was in Fire Emblem Engage, I think, as Fagato and like he was genuinely the first actor where when his character came on screen and spoke, I was like, this actor is having so much fun playing this character. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm really interested to see his take on that. I think the only actor that's, like, basically, like, doesn't really have much under their belt is Ken's. Um, I think they've had, like, a small handful of roles before now. So I'm really curious about that one. Um, yeah, I'm very excited. No, yeah, and I, I, I've liked everything they've really shown so far. I'm excited to kind of see more. It, it's, it's still being exactly like what I've kind of thought the game was going to be. Of like, it's Persona Three in Unreal Engine Four to be to to be made as appealing as possible to every Persona Five fan ever. Yeah, which I I do like on that note. Again, a lot of people are like, wow, it's just P3, but a P5 reskin. I'm like, I don't agree. It's definitely the level of stylization. Maybe, okay, not the amount of, like, in-your-face stylization that P5 has, because that game is very much trying to be in-your-face. Like, that's, like, thematically, yes. But in terms of just the UI cohesion and how much effort they put into a lot of those assets and the framing of things... It doesn't feel like... Like, it feels like its own thing to me. It definitely... Like, I get it. I see the basic elements. But it still feels like its own evolution of 
Like, ultimately, this is just... It's less this is trying to be P5, more so this is the level of style that Atlas clearly seems to enjoy, like, for their UI. Because, like, even seeing, like, the UI and stuff we've seen for Metaphor or, like, even before, if, you know, it's not P5, but, like, uh, Catherine, like, Catherine Full Body, both of those, like, this is just a UI style that in the last 10, 15 years, they've just went ham with. Well, and, so, I, and, I, and I would say at least, like, I'm glad that this looks better to me just straight up presentation-wise and visual-wise than Persona 5. Because, like, when I would look at stuff like Persona 5 or Royal or even Catherine, I'd be like, yep, this is a PS3-ass engine. Like, this is an old-ass yeah, engine. Whereas, like, you look at something like, um, and I know some people like how it looks in Royal, but this game looks way better in motion at 60 FPS than P5R ever did to me. Yeah, because Royal, Royal was not built for it, and there's some moments where it feels a little jank. Like, that, the 60 FPS port they did is generally surprisingly good. Um, yeah, but, like, overall, this definitely seemed a lot more focused in on we have the money, we have the time and budget, whatever. Like, it's not going to be the next-gen of next-gen games. But in terms of just, we're actually making a new mainline persona, quote unquote new. But no, I don't even give it the quotes. It's a new interpretation of it. It's a new game. Making a new mainline persona game in the modern year, you can feel it a lot more. The models are a lot more polished. They look nicer. They're like, I, I think from what I've seen, they're like slightly more polished and like different versions of the dancing models. Oh, no, they're uh, drastically different models for sure. But like, and even though. I will say an interesting little wrinkle, though, to my compliment. I've still not seen anything from P3R that shows me that this is a meant-for-next-gen only kind of game. In the sense of, like, I've still yet to see anything that's like, yeah, this wouldn't run on Switch. Which is an interesting thing of kind of going back to the platforms it is and isn't on. Um, that being said, though, like... I like it's a testament of like, hey, what's there? It's kind of like in that sense. Remember when we talked about Soul Hackers two? Of like Soul Hackers two, you can see the budget instantly, but it's still yeah. very stylish. P three R is like is like triple to five times the budget of uh, Soul Hackers two, but is still clearly a lower budgeted game, even when immediately compared to uh, Metaphor. Like, when you look at Metaphor, yeah. you're not Me seeing... Metaphor looks like they're trying to make, a, like, relatively speaking, a blockbuster. Yeah, whereas, like, Persona 3 Reload is fixed camera angles when you're in the outside world. A lot of menu-heavy areas. A lot, like, the whole game is already been confirmed to not be all voice acted. Like, all the story parts will be voice acted, but, like, there's, like, just little things that kind of, like, okay, I can see where you're cutting corners and not in a way that's going to make it a worse game but something that like hey this is a like you, you could see the triple a on metaphor instantly whereas this like persona 3 reload is a solid a game it is a very a level budget i mean i will say with that being said they did say that like p3 reload is like either comparable to if not slightly more in terms of the voice acting compared to Royal, which oh, I no, think no, no, yeah. had the most voice acting no, before, for, for there's sure. a lot still. For sure, for sure. Like, but but I, I'm meaning yeah. in the sense of, like, a good example is, like, Final Fantasy XVI. A big caveat people have had is, like, that game, when you see its budget, it's all over the place. But then other things, too, like, Final Fantasy has parts that aren't even all voiced, but then as soon as it's not, it takes you right out of it. You're like, oh, yeah. yeah. Like, as soon as you get the, like, one-word sentence text like fill in you kind of feel it whereas like when games don't have that and like everything is voiced that's like one that's one of those like oh you guys gave this like fuck you money yeah it's like it's like a very rare like it's either they gave it a ton of money or the devs are just crazy because i i don't think 13 sentinels had a psychotic budget by any means they just they just did that they just chose to do that even i don't even think like I'm not. I'm not saying it was a cheap game by any means. I don't even think Fire Emblem Three Houses had world's craziest budget, especially when you compare it to like the visuals of that game versus Fire Emblem Engage. Three Houses, much cheaper looking game, like by all admission. 
that entire game is voice acted head to toe. I have no idea how they did that. Like, <laughs> it is absurd. Um, I don't know. I I 100% get what you're saying, though, with, like, the budget of Reload. How it, it feels like it's being very well balanced. And, again, only based on what we've seen so far. We've seen mostly just snippets. But it, it seems like there is a consistent level of polish that is going to make it a much more easygoing experience. What was your thoughts on the uh, quote-unquote extended, a.k.a. Uh, Yuri Lowenthal trailer they just put out this week? Yeah, so that was a... Uh, so they made... What is it? I think there was a very minuscule change for about three frames where... I forget who pointed it out. There's, like, a special attack meter that we saw over some of the character icons that wasn't there in the previous cut of this trailer. And that's the only difference. Happy well, well I mean, I mean that and also they added Yuri Lowenthal. Uh, assumingly... Well, I'm pretty sure we had seen that before. Nope. Unless that was that, just a leak. Nope, that whole, in, that whole intro was uh, added in just for this one. I'm assuming that is... Uh, that Yuri Lowenthal is voicing Mitsuru's father? It was either I, I remember people saying it was either Mitsuru's father or Yukari. Yeah, on it, but I mean, yeah, it, it could it could be either one of them. But a cool little thing to be like, hey, look, Yuri Lowenthal yeah. is still in this game, and like, I, I I was kind of hoping they would still do that stuff with it. So it was an interesting reveal of like, oh, cool, here's like a take on him. I definitely wouldn't have named it the expanded trailer. Yeah, I think Atlas Atlas is such an odd company sometimes. I think people get very heated about the way they do things in a very weird way. Um, like, to an unnecessary degree. That being said, they also just handle their stuff in a very weird way a lot of the time. So I understand people being irked by some stuff. Because, <laughs> like... I, I, I can't blame it. Like, they probably... I was talking with Michelle, uh, aka Senorish, um a lot about this the other day but like we were thinking about the 25th anniversary and how you know barely anything happened during that other than the p4au port and kind of you know how justified that was and you know the obvious reality of it is like yeah they probably just had a ton of those brand deals and sponsors already lined up that they couldn't really avoid schedule wise be like and covid screwed that up well I guess we'll do this now, and all the projects that actually got delayed due to COVID, I guess they'll just come out next year or the year after. I don't know how long it's been. Time is broken. Um, I, I, I feel like it's been the 25th anniversary for at least half a decade. So, I don't know. It's it's just funny seeing that, where it's like, I understand it to a degree from Atlas's perspective. It's just really silly from a fan pers uh, perspective. No, one hundred percent. But it is like I I'm enjoying the like themed reveal, like little driplets, but I think it's really important that people need to remember they're revealing this game in threes. This is not a large cast. We're already over the halfway point of the party. Like Well that's the thing, because people people's assumption was they're like they're gonna reveal one character at a time per month ish, and I'm like I doubt it. I, I sincerely like I could see them doing specific character trailers, like, leading up to the reveal. Like, they did that with, like, Royal, I remember. And that was, like, their big thing of showing off a lot of the new stuff. Um, so I wouldn't doubt them doing that to some degree. I just don't see that as, like, it's your monthly news. Here's 30 seconds of Mitsuru. It's like, that... I don't know. It, it doesn't seem like it would be an effective drip feed. It, like, it would be a drip feed. I don't know how effective it would actually be at keeping people's investment. I feel like it would just devalue people being like, oh yeah, I guess P3 Reload's coming. Here's another character we know is already in the game. Like, like not that it wouldn't be cool. Again, like, with how my brain works, I'd be like, woo! 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 But... It wouldn't be any better. I don't know. So we'll see. They'll reveal stuff when they want to reveal stuff. I'm not 
expressing it. It's it's at least interesting though because I, I, I it's, it is funny you, you you're pulling uh, like the comparisons from when they did Persona Five and stuff. They're even doing it now with Tactica. Like Tactica, yeah. they're still doing the every like couple of weeks. Here's this trailer's foot. Here's this one character. Here's this one aspect. Here's this one thing. That, that's the funny thing is like I, I I was literally having an argument with someone like right before we got on call on online of like someone being like yeah no and it shows how incompetent Atlas is that they're not releasing any trailers they're not releasing any trailers for their stuff all their stuff is getting leaked because they're not releasing anything I'm like. Tactica has had a trailer almost every single week for, like, a month or two. Like, I literally don't know what you want. Yeah, and, like, I, I was talking uh, about this, like, last episode, but, like, I still think this is extremely true. You don't want to over-market the wrong game at the wrong time. Yeah. Like, Tactica's out first. We really don't need to know that much about Reloaded at the same time. I know Reloaded is obviously going to be the bigger game, but Tactica's their only big holiday uh, title for Atlas. Now, obviously, Atlas is going to care way more about, like, Sonic um, and Yakuza, but, like, in the grand scheme of things for Atlas, this should be their one big thing they're pushing. And then after Tactica, or at least when we get closer to Tactica... You hope, because like our big complaint as Atlas fans usually is always like, why are you giving this game attention now versus then? Like it always kind of feels like like they're doing the right thing, just never at the right time. And this is definitely kind of showing it to it of like, yeah, honestly, I don't need to see any more P3R. I want to see more yeah. P5T. I want to play P5T because that's like, coming out soon. For once, for once, I genuinely think Atlas is advertising strategy has been fairly consistent in a way that I'm vibing with. Like, I think it's gen like honestly been fine, which might be due to Xbox money and some direction with that for like their exclusive advertising. Um, which in that case, I guess I hope they partner more like good for Xbox fans. Um, but yeah, like I thought it's been fine and I've been seen consistently with a lot of people and there's always going to be this, like these people, but the idea that Atlas is at their worst right now is advertising and they're not showing anything of Reload. I'm like, the fact that we've gotten two major trailers already for a game that's not coming out until, like, spring of next year, friggin' cool. Like, I'm, I'm not... I don't need it right now. It's not coming out right now. It's not coming out for half a year. If, if even, probably later. No, 100%. My my only other weird little kind of like nitpick would be I still think the there's no comparison or quality between the English marketing and the Japanese marketing. The the Japanese market yeah. gets way more love and attention versus like we're lucky to get a tweet like once a week, you know? Yeah, which I I wish and again, it's different things with scheduling. Like I doubt all Kastiga by any degree has been dubbed. Oh no! Um, yeah, yes, it has. I'll do all of Tactica. All of Tactica was dubbed before the game was ever even announced. You know, I'll, I'll take your word for it then. Hundred um, percent, dude. All of uh, here, here's. Nice. A, I, don't, I don't know if this is a spoiler or like spoiler, not really, but like here's a fun one, guys, because I found this out after Anime Expo. Most, if not all, of P3R has already been dubbed. I, I can believe that. So, like, uh, the only thing I've, like, heard, there's, like, maybe some pickups, but, yeah. like, all of those were pretty much, like, locked in by the time we saw them. Like, as is tradition with Atlas, they don't really want to ever show us anything till it's done, uh, yeah. to not really have a repeat of, like, P5, so it is one of those funny things of, like, yeah, like, Tactica is that thing of, like, I'm sure Tactica's being, quote-unquote, worked on, but, like, in the sense of, like, your bug fixing, like, every part of Tactica's been done for at least the last uh, eight to nine months. Mm. And I think it would be nice, I forget if they've, I forget if they've ever done this uh, for, like, any of, like, the P5 announcements, but, like, they always do in Japan those, like, Morgana... Like, the little Morgana, Morgana showcase extravaganzas for whatever. And we've never really gotten that over here. And, like, 
I'm, I'm assuming it would be more effort to, like, drag Cassandra Lee Morris and whoever back in for that. So we have gotten it once during the Anime Expo P25 special English-only news. With Teddy. Where they did the Teddy and Morgana one for Persona... Th- wait, no, they did it twice. The one for Anime Expo announcement from the one last year. And then, yeah. the, and then the, a post-Xbox announcement for Persona 3, 4, and 5 coming to modern platforms. Mm-hmm. Know, it'd be nice to see that. And even then, like, it would be nice, worst case than that, like, you don't even have to release them on the West channel. They've done it before. Like, if they could just do subtitled trailers again, because they were doing that for SMT5 pretty consistently, which was really nice, which... Maybe that's just Nintendo money speaking. Um, or maybe not. It's just a laziness thing. I don't know. I find it really weird that they consistently did that for every small announcement for SMT5. And as far as I know, never again had like dedicated closed, ca- uh, closed captions for English viewers. No, it is weird. I mean, so they've done it for a couple of different live streams in and out. Like, remember the first like post-announcement metaphor they did. They did it for that. They had subtitles on the Japanese channel. Uh, okay, it, actually, you see that. It's just yeah. It's just again going back to the thing. It's oh, maybe they just don't do it for Persona then. It's weirdly inconsistent, and then when you like you think about it, it's like okay, but why? Yeah. Like it. It doesn't. T- they're not long videos. Like it doesn't take that much work to at least give like a basic summary of what's going on. Like they no. did it fine for. Like, we were able to react to those live, actually being informed on what's going on. Now, like, I do like watching the, what are they, they're called, like, the Nyahoos, the little Morgana podcast for... Uh, Listen, I'm just saying those Nyahoos should be exclusive to Yahoo Japan. That's that's my opinion. I think (laughs) they should commit to the name and make it exclusive. Perfect. No, but, like, I... I don't know. Just, Just do... Just do something... It's like freaking poking it with a stick. Just do something. <laughs> like, you, you are showing stuff off. I just prefer if you did it in a slightly more refined way, please. You've done it before. We know what you're capable of. Like, maybe, I don't know. At the very least, it feels like a bygone era. This feels kind of tangential, but it feels like a bygone era past this. I'm just happy at this point that we're getting simul releases. <laughs> like, Ever since SMT5, getting releases at the same time as Japan is like, freaking thank you. No, I, I, and I, and I get it. And I mean, we're still in like, a pr- we're in an interesting case because like we have Gamescom coming up soon, and we're gonna have a lot more footage coming out of it there, as well as Tokyo Game Show. Of both of those games are gonna be playable. We're gonna learn a lot more news about it there. I honestly wouldn't be shocked if we get a release date in the next like two months for P3R. Yeah. Um, but at the very least, I just, my, my biggest fear just really is like, I hope it just doesn't suck up all the oxygen for Tactica. Cause again, Tactica is going to not sell great. It's going to be at least the third worst selling spinoff. Probably like even with all the platforms it's on, I'd love to be wrong, but like with everything surrounding that game in terms of like what it is, when it's releasing and stuff like that, um, you know what? Actually, I'm I'm gonna contest that. I don't think it's gonna sell nearly as well as Strikers at all. Oh God, no! Well, that's number one though. Yeah, but I can see it reaching second or third highest. No, it, there's legitimately. no legitimately. You can doubt me on that. I, I know that. I know that's not. I, I, I know that's not an easy guess. The only the only problem level. I'd give you maybe top five. The only problem is slot two goes to Persona Q, which sold really really well on 3ds. Mm-hmm. That sold like gangbusters. And number three is Persona Four Arena, which also sold like fucking gangbusters. The difference is is P4A you got ported. No one cared. Uh, PQ has not been ported yet. If it did, that game would probably easily surpass. Um, because the Atlas install base at the time, again, was notably smaller. Still did really good for what it was. Notably smaller, though. Because uh, I think Q sold... It was like 500k to a million-ish? Maybe? Oh, no. Oh, over a mil, for sure. Okay. I can see Overtime Tactica doing 
surprisingly well, though. I don't know if it'll beat Q, but I, I can see it sitting over P4 AU. Maybe that's a hot take. I it's, think it, listen, uh, as someone who... Lo I'm excited for a new tactical game. I'd love it to be the fucking bee's knees. and Like, if, if for some miracle this outsells Strikers, I will gladly oh, eat a sock. I will eat... Know. Heck no. Even if but, it even if it outsold like Ultimax, I I mean not Ultimax. Even if it outsold uh, like Persona Q, I'd be shocked. Yeah, like I'm hesitant to say it'll outsell Q. That's why I said like second or third. I I think it'll get up there though. I think with the current install base and what the appeals are and having the kind of advertising they have, especially since like even just seeing the Royal Port for Xbox and seeing how Xbox advertised that, they did a freaking good job in like the last month of like, this is coming, here's a trailer that's actually gonna sell it, it isn't just, like, cause that was one thing that annoyed me about Royal's initial advertising is, hey, it's an updated version of this game already, we're gonna show all the updates for everyone and like spoil the main game. And it's like, okay, this trailer isn't really appealing to most people who didn't already play P5. And then you see the Xbox version of the trailers that released, which, one, like, side note, have some of the best editing I've ever seen in a video. It's so freaking good. The, like, I forget what it was called, but one of the last trailers they released for Royal on Xbox. Utterly gorgeous trailer. Um, but, like, they did a lot of work to push that. I definitely don't think they're going to be doing that much for Tactica, since it's, you know, a spinoff. But... I think it is going to be pushed enough to leave an impact. I don't think we're at that phase right now where they're pushing it that hard, but I think it is going to ramp up a notable degree. No, I can, I can definitely see that. And I mean, hey, they already paid for the like marketing rights for it. Like, I'm sure like they're ready to lean in on it, especially because this is a fall where they don't have anything after Starfield and Forza. So it's like, hey, November, there you go. You got something to you got something to pump out now. Yeah. Now, kind of so, kind of going like a little bit more into Tactica though. Like from all the stuff we've seen uh, recently, especially with like uh, we finally have World's Worst Kept DLC Secret is is official. We've got yeah. a, we've got a, the Sumis, the, all the all the Kaz, all the Kasumis, all the Akichis. Everybody's here for DLC. Um, is your opinion because actually, yeah, you have not talked about uh, tactile on this show yet. What's the like Persona Five uh, shill opinion? Like, what's the what's the P Five fandom thinking about Tactica right now? You know, again, like that was a game that very much at reveal got easily overshadowed by P Three Reload, which yeah, it's the bigger game. It's the better bigger game. I'm really excited for that game. The more I see of Tactica, the more excited I am for it. I don't know if, even as, like, major P5 fan, I don't know if I say I, I'm more excited for it than P3 Reload. Maybe, like, both about equal for me. But, like, I love P5. I love Tactics games. This seeming, like, especially with the last trailers we've seen it, this seems like the perfect middle ground between <laughs> XCOM and, like, the Mario and Rabbids games. Like, which very much, you know, like, people joke with Mario and Rabbids, like, it was an XCOM-like game, but for kids, or whatever. But taking the goofier, like, more movement-based gameplay of that, and the more tactical, like, almost verticality of, like, XCOM, and, like, a lot more strategy and depth to that. Gameplay-wise, I think this game looks phenomenal. Story-wise, I think it'll be cute. I'm not expecting it to blow me away story-wise. If it does, that's a nice bonus. I think it looks awesome. <laughs> I, I'm i not allowed to spoil... Can I spoil Royal on here? <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah, whatever. If you've not okay. beaten Persona 5 Royal, cover your baby ears for the next 30 seconds because all of the internet has already done that for you. Okay. Yeah, I, I get why people whine. I don't really care that the... Kasumi Akechi stuff takes place earlier because most of the people are like, no, it was supposed to confirm that Akechi is alive. He's alive, dang it. I'm like, you can believe that if you want. I think he's dead. And like the writers intentionally left it ambiguous despite their beliefs. 
I, I don't think they're putting him in another game as like a canon reappearance. Like the, literally the only exception I could think of is if they do some weird thing with like Arena if we ever see that come to light. Ozzy, like, Ozzy, you're such a sheep. You clearly don't understand the mastermind Zippo revealed to us last year that the Akechi spinoff <laughs> game is days <laughs> away. Days Zippo. away. The Zippo, the Zippo Lighter Prophet will return. You know, unironically, maybe Zippo just... Well, I say unironically, even though I'm being very ironic with... Full, yeah, iron, full irony. Full irony. Full irony. And he was like, look, look, it's the Akechi Chibi game. They said it couldn't be done. <laughs> yeah, and it, it couldn't. <laughs> still con- <laughs> still continues to not be done. Um, I don't know, I, I think the new campaign, or new campaign, but the game hasn't even released yet. The DLC campaign looks cute. It looks fun. Like, I don't I don't care because I think the gameplay itself looks stupid fun. And if the story, they're like, oh, it's not going to, like, change the status quo for P5. And they're not going to change for the future if it's not taking place after Strikers. I'm like, what do you, like, are you waiting for Strikers 2 to, like, come out? And there's going to be a scene where Ryuji is just walking around and he's just going to stop, look directly at camera. And he's going to be like, hey, Joker. Remember when we went to feudal Japan, like got Isekai to feudal Japan and fought like a Shogun King and like saved the businessman? Man, wasn't that crazy? And then move on. That would be like, that would be peak fiction. It would be peak fiction. But like, if you're not into that, I'm sorry, that's basically all you would get. You're not going to we're not going to get some story that's going to be this ultimate culmination of every single P5 spinoff. That it, it it's all been building up to this like Infinity War like I'm, it doesn't it's not gonna happen. Yeah, ironically, the only example of that ever happening in our uh, entire series with Persona has been Persona Q and Arena because those like in, in especially with Arena Ultimax like including so many different characters including like spinoffs was such a kind of, like, wow moment that still has yet to be replicated in the way that you talk. Like, we're never going to have a Persona Avengers Infinity War, like, in-game moment where, like, everyone comes through the portal, you know? No, I agree with that. I just, I I will say as well with Q is, like, it's not like those characters are getting long-term development. It takes place before. Like, it's just, that game is meant to be a cute fan service game. It also comes with a pretty good story overall from what I've seen. But, like, it's a cute fan service game. Arena tries to forward things. And maybe there's a hot take. I think it fails. <laughs> but, like, it's an attempt, I guess. But, like, you're not going to... It's not going to be this combination that... I don't see what lesson it's like Joker needs to learn this and he's going to be a changed man for the the finale of Persona 5, the franchise. I, don't, I just don't think it matters that much. I'll take the games as they come and judge them when they come out. I, I, I just think there's a problem <laughs> with the Atlas community of prejudging stories like way before games come out. And it happens every time and it's really funny. I'm, I'll just wait for the game. <laughs> I'm ju- I'm just glad that we thankfully kind of avoid that for the most part. But uh, I I will say though, I'm I'm not I'm not sure what which one to guess. Where are you going to play Tactica? Because I'm still not sure myself. I still think probably PS5, but like I undoubtedly am like yeah, this would honestly be a delight to play on the Switch. But like, what about you? See if I reach a steadier financial situation both um (laughs) knowing myself i will not be able to help myself and get both that being said with where i am right now um more than likely ps5 i agree with you on switch this would probably be excellent but like it was kind of that thing i was having that debate i I mentioned the game before like octopath traveler 2 i'm like the first game was a switch exclusive at launch perfect game for switch like And it's, like, I was like, you know, let me see it. And I played the demo on Switch. I was like, okay, cool. Let me just try the demo on PS5. Because I'm pretty certain I'll play on Switch. But maybe the PS5 would be a glow up. And then I remembered that the PS5 runs in 4K. And I was like, oh, yeah, okay. 
Yeah. <laughs> like, it's not like Tactica is graphics heavy. But oh, the no, man. Style I, and I, how they're doing the, it, I think this game looks gorgeous. Well, all right. Let's be honest. The gameplay looks pretty fucking budget, though. Like, it's a. Whereas, yeah, like, no, I agree. it's a barren ass fucking map. Which, like, it's a tactical game. It doesn't have to. But, like, those are some empty ass maps. That being said, though, what is there, I think, is stylized in a way that, for me, being me, because I'm me, I'm like, I need to see this in 4K. I don't care if it's barely making a difference. It's a difference. Oh, no, for sure. It'll be way smoother, uh, undoubtedly. Also, literally within the uh, filming of this podcast, they just released a uh, Fox trailer for Tactica. Oh, wow. <laughs> Uh, speaking of uh, these coming out uh, hot, hot and heavy, but um, I, I will say I saw a friend of mine like posted a video. I have no idea what the context of what it's from. It's like some guys like assuming like video review or something. But I've never thought this was you and someone else's clothing more in my life. It's this guy who's like before this video gets started, if you were adverse to hearing the words peak fire. Oh, <laughs> I think he's talking about uh, Tales. Not I have uh, no idea what series. it's in reference to, but I, like, when I saw that, I thought of you. <laughs> and it's like, go, you should just have... You, you literally need to just film that, like do a cover of that video with Persona 5 next to you. And it's like, if you're averse to hear the words Peak Fiction, Raw, Fire, Persona 5, click off, unfollow now, because this is yeah. all you're going to be hearing. The weights are off. I'm like, Rockley, the weights are off. No, yeah, that... You're right. <laughs> it's okay. We, no. we, we, we know what your problem is, and that's step one to getting you help. Exactly, exactly. But yeah, I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad the hype check is still there. Uh, I will say though, because I, again, I don't ever do not want it to make it seem like I'm dogging on P5T at all. Like legitimately, if this game had a bigger budget, my dream version of it, it would be all 2D and would look fucking amazing. Uh huh. Because the 2D version of this art style looks way better in motion than the 3D version. In my opinion. I. I can see what you... Because I think the 2D style is gorgeous. I I understand it, at least. I understand it. But, like, hey, like, like what, what I've seen, like, in action, like, with the gameplay and stuff with it, still really, really fun. Like, still really, really good. Uh, like, for me, it's it, a very solid 8 out of 10 on the hype meter right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, what about you? I think that's understandable. Like, realistically, yeah, it's probably, like, an 8 out of 10 in hype. Um, earnestly, me being me, I'm like, oh, it's more Persona 510. <laughs> like, that's what we've been waiting for. I'm not expecting anyone to be on my level. Realistically, though, like, bias aside, or at least most of the bias aside, I genuinely think it looks like a really, really good spinoff game. And I like a lot of the style with it. I think the gameplay looks great. We'll see how it does. I hope people like it. All right, last but not least, after I think we've talked what feels like 19 hours, especially after our hour of troubleshooting, uh, before we get into questions and wrap this bad boy up, uh, I did want to at least talk, we had one like surprising news drop today, uh, and this is also mostly a reminder so that Ozzy keeps uh, reading these fucking books. Um, mm. We got a cover reveal today for volume 12 of the Persona right, 5 yeah. manga, and so right now... As where we're at, because it's always weird with, like, the Japanese versus English dates. So, we just got Volume 10 last month. And we're getting into, with Volume 11, that'll probably be out by end of year for us in the West. But there's still no pre-order date. Um, the cover for 11 was really cool, because this one is just uh, Kasumi on it, like, taking her mask off. Uh, as well as, which by the way, I feel like every time I talk about the P5 manga, it just leads to people eventually be like, what? There's royal content? Why you guys didn't tell yeah. me there's royal content? <laughs> but, um, th the funny thing is though, the cover though for 12 is, uh, really, really nice of A, Sigh. it's a, it's a return, it's a, re it's a return to Akechi as well as Sai, and then like, you just kind of remind yourself like, oh my god. 
we're actually getting close to finishing this fucking story. <laughs> yeah, g- give it like give it two or three years, we might be there, if even. But we're getting there. Yeah, so oh. I included it in the thumbnail so everyone can kind of check it out. I think the art of the covers continue to look fantastic. Um, I did want to check in with you, though. Where, where are you at right now on your uh, manga binge? Um, I haven't read it in a while. I do need to get back to it. I re- Reading is very hard. I mentioned before, it makes me EP. Um, but I really need, like, for, like, at least a week... Just like your Twitter banner to just sorry your X banner to just be oh uh, to just be Patrick sleeping while there's a copy of Persona <laughs> Five and Great Ace Attorney next to you. Oh my! We'll, we'll make it happen at some <laughs> point. I promise. Um, but yeah, no, I haven't read in a bit. I do have I have up to volume nine sitting here. What I did start reading through actually, which I do need to get back to because I got like halfway through the series. I do also have a Mementos mission, which I finally picked up and started reading through. And that is like one of the best Persona 5 things. Oh yeah, it's it's easily my favorite Persona 5 adaptation that's not Strikers. I I 100% agree. I Obviously Strikers is a much bigger, longer like girthy experience. Um <laughs> just real sensual. No, but, like, for how short Memento's mission is, I really would not doubt if by the time I finish it, like, it is my favorite non, like, mainline adaptation. I, I've i said this before. I think I, I talked about it with uh, Gab on the podcast last about it. But, like, Memento's mission literally is the best rendition of these characters I've ever seen, including Definitely. some fucking official things that Atlas has made with these characters. No, I agree. Like, I I don't think I've ever seen any writer... Uh, and again, it's not a slight to the main P5 manga. I think it is good. It plays a lot of... Well, I mean, a lot of that is, like, adaptation versus original. Yeah. So, like... It, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, they, 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 they both have their pluses and minuses, for sure. But, yeah, like, but- S- Saito-san, like, goes, goes absolute... Like, you can tell that they are a big fan of this world. Yeah, like, even, like, despite all the things I love about Strikers overall, looking at Memento- or Memento's mission, like, I don't think I've ever seen another writer tackle these characters with so much clear love for this cast and understanding of each of them and who they are and what their dynamics are and making making each of them feel fun and present in the plot and in general like the first thing you notice going through the first book is shibuya feels so well lived in and like portrayed as like yeah, this city and all these confidants combined and, like, Joker going back and forth and interacting with them and how that intertwines is so naturally handled. It's so... Please please read this manga. Not you. Again, speaking past you. This is a PSA. Buy it now. Like, right now. Do it. I don't even care if you don't like P5. Give them your money. Best, best part is uh, the Ultimax manga done by the same guy starts coming out this Ooh. month. Awesome. Yeah, I didn't know it was the same guy, so I might actually check that out. Because the actual story of Ultimax, I am not a huge fan of. No, yeah, and thankfully Saito-san does the exact same thing where he, instead of adapting it, just makes it good. <laughs> you know what, I'll, I'll see how that goes, and I might, I might check that out. It's like, have you ever heard of Shomi Nizuki? Well, here's him good. Yeah. But, again, maybe that's a hot take. I don't I didn't really find... Okay, I can't speak for the characters in Q, because I know people really like some of the Q characters. Um, otherwise, I'm not, like... I think Konamine and Labrys and Sho are, like, passable. Um, no spinoff character really hit anywhere close to the level of, like, a mainline Persona character until Strikers. Oh, yeah. Because Sophie and Zenkichi are peak fiction, my beloved, uh, my baby <laughs> girls. My, my, my baby girl dad. Exactly. Well, before we get out of here, we got a couple of handful of questions to go through. Uh, fresh from X.com, our first question 
is for Red Hood 7832 it says do you think the games will uh, be successful considering it's going to be up against Super Mario RPG remake uh, will it also be overshadowed by P3R? So obviously we talked about P3R kind of overshadowing it, but uh, yeah, big fucking wet fart noise for that release date not getting moved. Yeah, I'm, I think it'll be fine. I think it'll, like, it, it's obviously, it's not going to sell as much as that. Not even close. But it's, it's not that it's different audiences. I feel like one isn't really replacing the other for a lot of people. And again, like knowing how a lot of this is marketed, obviously the people who didn't care already, I feel like for the most part, aren't going to care about like something like tactical dropping. But I feel like for the people who did have it on, on mind, it's not going to be like, oh gosh, got to decide between one or the other. It's going to be like, yeah, I'm going to probably get both and then just play whichever one is interesting me more first. Like, I, I don't think it's going to damage it that much. Again, maybe me being optimistic, I think it'll be fine. Will it damage uh, it much? No. Will it severely stop a large audience of Switch owners from checking it out? 100%. Yeah. I'm, again, granted, though, like, knowing... I mean, I guess that is assuming it actually gets to the top of the list. But, like, with how the Switch eShop is designed... It does do a good job of funneling people into certain games that they wouldn't normally try because it's just like, what's in the best-selling games list? Oh, cute little thing. I know Persona, sure. Like, I think it's not as bad as I would normally expect for something like this. But yeah, it's not... Like I said, if they weren't interested already, I, I don't think they're going to be flocking to it. No, that def that definitely makes sense. Um, I would at least say this honestly, with the way the calendar looks right now, move it up. Legitimately, just release it like a month earlier. I think it would help tenfold. Get it out in September uh, or October if possible. But I know they won't do that. Uh, they're just going to yeah. be stubborn, and they're gonna they'll be like, no, we'll release with <laughs> Mario. No. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So, Jopo says, do you think Atlas is still hiding any major twists with P3R? If so, would you consider an acceptable approach, um, uh, an acceptable approach to be any sort of addition? I'm gonna say no major twists, but there will definitely be something added to that game in terms of either how it's played or something that's added to it in terms of gameplay that will be more than what we know right now. Whether it be like that special yeah, it, meter meter or something else. Yeah, it, it's definitely not going to be like... We're not getting a Final Fantasy VII remake situation or like near replicant remake. Like, it's not going to drastically alter the plot as we know it and redefine what makes Persona 3 like story-wise. Like, no. But like, from what we have heard and they haven't shown or just like small snippets we've seen, like there's a couple little gameplay quirks that I think are going to be interesting to see. Like, stuff with, like, follow-up attacks. Maybe some kind of ultimate something. I don't know. Like, we've seen little hints of that. We know that, uh, like, the male social links aren't in the game for the party. But, like, they've got, like, side stories. Which we have no clue how the implementation of that is going to be. But supposedly it's conveying the same thing. So I, I have no clue, but we'll see how that is. I know, it definitely just seems like, again, a new take on Persona 3, a new interpretation, a new, like, way to experience it. It's not going to completely remove that story, but, like, the actual experience of going through it might feel different. At least from a gameplay perspective, maybe storytelling, depending on how they shuffle some of that stuff around. Yeah, I'd say like at least the only big one I'm I'm very confident in them sticking with is they're definitely not going to be adding anything answer related. They're pretty clear about yeah. that. I still could see them being cheeky and still throwing something portable related either at the end, DLC or whatever, because really the answer is the only major one that they keep coming back to be like no, 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 we're not we're not adapting that, we're not adapting that. We're just adapting no, no. the original. The major twist is uh at the end of the game when which i'm gonna be nice and not be like i'm not gonna speak specifically just because you know it's a new game coming out 
there are bound to be some people who don't know the story, but you know, when when the game concludes and they're all chilling out together, you, you've got you got the P3 protagonist chilling out there. All of a sudden, close his eyes, body morphs into Femzy. I want you to know it's it's at least the worst idea I've heard since going on R slash Animorphs. I'll tell you that. <laughs> But I could still see it happening. That's the sad part. Uh, next question by Jackpot. Do you think P3 Reload will allow the protagonist to wield multiple weapon types, just like in Persona 3 and Fez, and if not, why? That's an interesting one of, like, bringing back. I would say that's an example of if that's not in the game and we just have to go back to fucking samurai swords, that's a that's a loss. That'd be disappointing. I can... Okay. I can see them maybe holding off on that like in a you know worst case scenario like holding off on that for the sake of maybe balance if they feel that the balancing would be not as optimal if you had all those options that being said i don't care let me pick pick my weapon i think that's cool um still though it it is a weird one of like that's kind of up there with like with this being a full on remake i'm kind of like hey you better also still include all those costumes. And, like, for free. Yeah. Like, you can't DLC those costumes. Oh my, or oh just, my or god. Ju- or just get rid of them. Like, okay. I, because Atlas is Atlas is Atlas is Atlas, I will accept if they're, like, we're gonna add extra costumes as well as DLC that's references to newer stuff, whether it's, like, Soul Hackers 2, Persona 5, Persona 4, whatever. Sure. Just include the original costumes that they were there. Just please. Ozzy, are you are you ready for like I'm gonna predict the internet outrage and this will be true? In the digital deluxe only edition of P3R, that is the only way to get the battle armor for all the girls. Oh my gosh. Could you imagine? If that's, if that's the one answer content that they decide to... You know what? That's funny enough to be true. I agree. It's it's just cursed enough. The only way, though, I'll say this. You can make Battle Armor DLC, but you have to give it to the boys, too. That Okay, I would at least be okay with it if they did it like that. Just imagining... Just, Relatively. Just, just, well, just, I'm not okay with it if it's a... Digital Deluxe exclusive, still screw you. Just, but, just, yeah. uh, just imagining like, uh, <laughs> just imagining fucking Akihiko talking about like the, the the metal bra on his nipples. He's like, it just it, it itches. I just can't, I can't fight, <laughs> I can't fight comfortably in these. <laughs> and he's like, did you see that, Shinji? And Shinji's just like, yes, please put a shirt on. This does not look good on you. <laughs> Uh, next one is from I Am Me. says, For the compendium of P3, it was revealed that Silky is in the game, which it wasn't in the original. What other new demons would you like to see added? Uh, well, through the through the miracle of copy and paste, I'm going to say this. Fucking anyone from P... No, not from P3. Uh, every demon from SMT5 better be in that game, then. I hope. It's just... I I don't fully understand it. It seems odd how they pick and choose certain things for certain games, because, like, yeah, Royal has a different demon roster from SMT5, which has a different demon roster from Soul Hackers 2. Even if, like, there's some obvious overlap that could happen that they just don't bother. Like, uh, you know, I'll, I'll one-up you there, because this, this one I have more personal stake in. Yeah, put all the DLC demons from Soul Hackers 2 in, in, uh, in P3 Reload. Including the Missa. So, <laughs> here's an interesting one. I could see two demons from SMT5 being brought over. Okay. I could see Artemis. Mm-hmm. The, like, Knights of the Zodiac version, not, like, the one with all the tits on her. Yeah. Um, I could see either Artemis being brought over or Cleopatra. Okay, those were the, the DLC ones, right? Yes, but, like, as... As just added new super demons. That would be nice at least, because those are cool ones. They put a lot of effort into them. Please don't just... 
just please. Like, again, realistically, it doesn't make a huge difference balance-wise as far as I know or whatever. Just, you you can throw, like, almost all of them in there and it's fine. That was complete. Just, you can give it a bigger compendium. It's like, I nope. Guess maybe They're like, nope, nope, the like cap a, is 103. Can't go anymore. Sorry. Ran out yeah. of memory. Yeah, that's odd. Oh, here's an interesting one of, like, major addition, but that's not story. Take a note from Royal, add a third evolution to Personas. Hmm. Okay. Except make them voiced this time, and not make it sound like a fucking weird fan mod. Yeah, I don't know. It, you know, there's actually, there was, um, this kind of tangenting off that, but, uh, when I was working, I'm still debating if I'm actually going to finish the video or not, because... It's, it's just kind of been sitting there while I've been working on other stuff. But uh, I, I plan to do a video about, like, Persona 6 ideas and, like, you know, taking criticism from past games and seeing how they can address it in the new ones and what they can do. And, you know, there are a lot of people who are like, you know, they don't like the Persona evolutions through social links. Do it so it's, you know, they evolve their Persona through the story like it does most of the time in P3. And I, I forget the exact way that my idea was formed, but it was basically the idea of like just having a base game where you have first, second and third, where they have their first through the story, they get their second. And if you do like get to that point in the story and like, or not get to that point, but like if you've done that and then also do the social link, then they get an extra buff to their whole character arc and get a third one. I think that could be a cool way of handling that. Now that's not going to be a change they're going to make for reload. That's not that's not happening like that, but I think it could be cool if they did in the future. No, I don't think they'll sure. have third tiers. Though. I mean, wait, unless there's some weird late game stuff that they do, maybe, but I kind of doubt it. Uh, next up, kind of going back to P5T, Crazy Slaw says, do you think we'll have any Easter eggs, mentions, or appearances from anyone from Strikers? I'll kind of change that a little bit. Do you think we'll see anything Strikers in anything P5T? I could see DLC. Outside of that, I don't think there'd be any mention in the story of them. I, you say you could see it in DLC. I'm kind of doubting that knowing how Atlas works, they're gonna after the fact release any more DLC if they've already got stuff slated for release. Otherwise, no, probably not. I don't know. See, because cool. I, I would say they're in the game, not as story content, unfortunately, but they would be DLC characters. I mean, it'd be cute. I just don't think it'll happen. No, of course not. No, nothing, nothing, yeah, nothing I want ever happens. Trust me. <laughs> yeah, I'd love it to happen. I don't think it'll happen. Um, let's see here. Um, oh, and here's the last question we got from uh, Devate, who says, Do you believe Eternal Punishment would be a better game if Maya wasn't a mute protagonist and spoke at, like they were in Innocent Sin? I, I can't speak as highly on this, because I still haven't beaten Eternal Punishment. Um... Because, yeah, I'm, I'm still working my way through all the P2 stuff. Here, here's, but... a, here's a good way to ask it for you, then, with, with, with that like a content. Would Ringo have been better mute? <laughs> no. Exactly. Because well, also, the, the thing is that, which I, I totally get it from the perspective of, like, going, like, through most of Innocent Sin. It does feel like a regression with a character as kind of peppy and as her, Maya. And she had so much personality, too. Yeah, it, to kind of dampen that. Because... Tatsuya, it works for him, and they do kind of maintain, like, from yeah, from everything I've seen in Eternal Punishment, he does talk in that game. And it still gives the energy as, like, yeah, this is how he sounded the entire time. Yeah, whereas Maya, mean, Maya is a noticeable like regression. Yes. Like, it's, it's like, yeah, that's really unfortunate. It's um, it's a thing where like I I feel like this comes up a lot with me with with silent protagonists as well as multi is like Atlas games when it comes to choice in the story they're never better off an Atlas game with well, less choices in the sense of like oh are you going to make option A B or C versus also not talking it's like it's never paid off it's never been better than if they just talked and because I I do think that 
there is a value to a very intentionally designed silent protagonist. I, I know not everyone's going to agree with that, but I do think that you can, even in something like P5, I, I personally think that game works better with the Joker being at least relatively silent. I'm not saying he has to be like deadpan mute. I don't think he really is to the extent that a lot of people think like with how that game's writing works. But I think having something intentionally designed like that can work. It works for Tatsuya in P2 um, really well. In fact, I think reverting a character who already had a very defined vocal personality and regressing them to be silent is infinitely worse than doing the other, like doing the inverse. If you're taking a silent character and giving them a voice, as long as they don't feel out of character, then I'm fine with it. Like that's how a lot of like the like adaptations with a lot of the protagonists or different more quiet characters, like they get by with it. Um, especially yeah, I'll, I'll note like the P3 movies uh, and the P4 anime do a lot with that and really lean into those elements of the characters. And I love it. But yeah, like taking someone who's already got that very defined expressive feel to them and ripping that away is way worse. I can accept it if they started that way and trying to craft it around that, but don't regress that. Yeah, could, I couldn't agree more, for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, Ringo for president. Yeah, yeah, her too. Please, Soul Hackers three, your twenty thirty X. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe we'll have it by then. But mm. uh, Ozzy, we're we're wrapping up here. Uh, where where do you want people to find you? Uh, at home. <laughs> Where's home? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm figuring that one out. <laughs> what is what a segue? It's almost like I played that one. Yeah. <laughs> Join oh. us join us next week for our next topic. Homeless? Oh my gosh. Yeah, because um <laughs> I, I guess did you want me to throw that at you now? <laughs> you <can. laughs> I, I mean if you want you can. I don't I don't mind. Um Yeah, because I've got a uh I, I can send you the link if it would be linked with the I I, I do have I the link, but you're more than yeah. welcome to talk about it, yeah. Yeah, no, because I I've got a bit of a financial situation going on, which like Part of why I'm doing all these commissions to help with that. But, yeah, house situation, house bills, not the best right now. Trying to figure out. So, like, even if, like, you send in a freaking dollar or something, I don't care. Like, a dollar five, whatever. Helps a lot. So, if any of you feel it's worth donating, would mean the world. Like, a lot. <laughs> you guys should, uh, like, find a really famous, like, AI voice YouTube or TikToker. And, like, get them to send Ozzy all of their monthly commission from, like, ad revenue. And they'd be like, here's your blood money. Oh, my gosh. Be like, oh, here's your money. But it all came from <laughs> AI voices. We'd be like, no! What a moral conundrum I'm in! Cash is check. Uh, otherwise, I guess you can find me <laughs> on YouTube at Oziac, spelled however you freaking want to figure out how to spell it. Uh, if you're not looking at the title of the podcast, or you can find me at Revived LZX, um on Twitter, or sorry X, because we're in a downward hellish spiral. It's gonna give it to That's you. That's the 11th circle. It's gonna give it to you. And 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 the, the freaking call. I just I just can't believe that uh, we're we're sitting here talking to famous YouTuber known for hot videos like. BuzzFeed opinions. Tell me your BuzzFeed results, hey, sir. Hey, listen. Hey, listen. That's a, <laughs> hey, listen. That's a good video. That's a that's a good that video is a banger. I'll have you. I'll have you know. I save the best vids for my channel. <laughs> <laughs> check out check out my uh, very f poorly shot unboxing video on my channel, and, and then wonder why I haven't uploaded in two months. <laughs> Listen, that was that was a video I made on a whim because I was like, yeah, I can fill a sponsorship slot and it'll be like fun to call Michelle. That is one of the funniest videos we've recorded. It would have only been better if it was actually sponsored by like Atlas or BuzzFeed. Like those are always oh really my funny. Gosh. Can you imagine? Yeah, yeah, I think it was sponsored by like Surfshark or something. Um, Use code Ozzy at uh, surfsharkvpn.com/ozzy. 
they'll never find you if you do. It's true. Well, everybody, if you'd like to donate to this show, God fucking knows this show didn't get any sponsors anytime soon. So the sponsors are you. Uh, yeah. Um, if you would like to support this show, as many others already do, you can go to patreon.com slash smtn. You can get the show early. You can get the show with some exclusive giveaways. Be an executive producer at the $5 and up tier. Uh, but honestly, seriously, even the dollar and up tier uh, super, super helps. Uh, every little bit does count, but the $5 and up executive producers do get called out at the end of every episode. So shout out, as always, to Budweiser Talkan, Cameron Sharp, Carlos Hernandez, Contraband, Crossrunner, and K-Horse, Mirth Mouser, Patrick Dissart, uh, Solaire, and Winnie. Thank you guys so much for being awesome peeps. Uh, greatly, greatly appreciate all of you. Uh, not as much as I appreciate uh, Ozzy, I think, just eating and kissing the microphone right now. <laughs> I don't know what that noise was, but that's uh, audio gold right now. I have no clue how that sounded on your end. It literally, it literally sounded like you sat on the microphone and ate it at the same time. Like It was just going I into both. I have no clue why I've been <laughs> sitting here. Well, everybody, we made it to the end of another episode. We'll see you next week? Question mark? Uh, but either way, for real, if you guys could either share or, uh, help Ozzy out at all, it is super appreciated. Much like this show, even if you can't actually, like, financially help it, I can't ever stress this enough how much just sharing something helps. Because you're just getting more eyeballs on it. Um, but this show has had too many eyeballs on it as, as it is. We got we gotta get out of here. I need to prove to my wife that I can finish a podcast before midnight, uh, I think in ten minutes it's going to be midnight for you, so I, I'm, I'm also trying to make the impossible happen. New well, record. We're actually sub two hours, which is actually pretty surprising. I was going to say that's surprising. Yeah. Let's have Even another. Let's have like another. An yeah. <laughs> let's breaking, talk, breaking Bad. Let's talk. Piece. Let's talk about my my new obsession of Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul edits to exclusively Tommy and Paula songs. <laughs> Well, everybody, thank you so much. I'll see you next week. Have a good one. Goodbye. That's when you say goodbye. What, did you forget to sit on the microphone again? Because <laughs> I didn't want to cut you off. You won't, you wouldn't, you couldn't understand. You can't fathom the power that I have over this podcast, Ozzy. I could shoot <laughs> lightning bolts out of my fingertips. Goodbye. Thank you. Aren't you glad you stuck with this?